Do you remember the first lighthouse you ever saw? What is the mystique of these towers? Is it that they've saved lives, brought comfort? Is it their historical significance or the stories within their walls? Is it that they're symbolic of spiritual heights and significance? Whatever it is, they beckon to us. The first lighthouse was built on Pharaoh's Island in Alexandria, Egypt, somewhere between 280 to 247 B.C. It was 400 feet tall. Cape Hatter's Lighthouse is 198 feet tall. The word Pharaoh's means fire. How many existing lighthouses are there in North Carolina? Venture a guess. There are 11, counting two replicas. They are all open for climbing except for Ocracoke, usually opening in the spring and closing in the fall. To make sure the lighthouse you plan to visit is open, visit its website. There might be climbing restrictions. Daily openings are dependent on weather, including rain and windy conditions. And from time to time, a lighthouse may be closed for safety reasons, which could include repairs. Here, on this map, the image in black is the U.S. coastline. There is a narrow strip of land called Barrier Islands that hug North Carolina's coastline. Shoals or mountains of sand underneath the water off the islands. The cool waters off the Labrador Current from the north in blue and the warm waters of the Gulf Stream in yellow from the south meet and mix, causing turbulence underneath the water. This causes the shoals to shift, making North Carolina's coastline treacherous for mariners to navigate. In North Carolina, there are the Diamond Shoals off Cape Hatteras, the Cape Lookout Shoals, and frying pan shoals off the Cape Fear. Colonial Lights came under the United States Lighthouse Establishment, which was created in 1789. Alexander Hamilton was directed by George Washington to oversee the building of lighthouses in the states. The United States Coast Guard became stewards of all lighthouses in the United States in 1939. They quickly learned that maintenance was a problem, and many of the towers were left to ruin. The National Historic Lighthouse Preservation Act of 2000 is an amendment to the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. It provides a mechanism for the disposal of federally owned historic light stations. The United States Coast Guard began transferring towers to state parks, national parks, nonprofits, and townships, but through an application process to prove that the stewards were worthy. There are different kinds of lighthouses for different purposes. Coastal lights are our tall towers on the coast, built about every 40 miles. They warn mariners to stay away from our coastline because of the dangerous shoals. Lights are seen for about every 20 miles, so as one light fades, another one will come into view. Who owns them now? Currituck Beach Lighthouse is our northernmost lighthouse. It was built in 1875 and is located in Corallon near the Virginia border. It is an unpainted brick tower and one of few which still has its original first order Fresnel lens. It is the fourth tower built with a double wall designed for strength. It is owned and operated by the Outer Banks conservationists who oversaw the restoration of the lighthouse and keeper's quarters in the 1980s. Body Island Lighthouse, pronounced B-O-D-Y, is owned by Cape Hatteras National Seashore. It was built in 1872 and is the third lighthouse built near its present location, which is a few miles south of Nags Head. It is the third lighthouse built with the double wall design. The name Body came from a family from England who settled in the area in the 1700s, originally spelled B-O-D-D-I-E, it has been spelled different ways, even in the same document. Stephen Pleasanton was auditor to the Secretary to the Treasurer when the first Body Island Lighthouse was built in 1847. He was a frugal man and tried to save money by building the tower with no foundation. 
It soon tilted, and the light shone upon the ground, and mariners wrecked into the shore, searching for the light. Another tower was built in 1859, but was destroyed two years later in the Civil War. The present tower, with black and white bands, was the third to be erected. Thoughts were that the third time is a charm, and it would outlast the first two, which it has. But two weeks after the lamp was lit, a flock of geese flew into the lantern room and damaged the glass panes and some of the prisms of the first order Fresnel lens. Body Island Lighthouse is one of the few lighthouses which still has its original lens. The first Cape Hatteras Lighthouse was built in 1803 and is sometimes known as Hamilton's Light. Legends say that when Alexander Hamilton was a young man aboard a ship, it nearly wrecked and caught fire off the coast of Cape Hatteras. He promised that he would do all he could to see the lighthouse erected there. It was the first that he oversaw. It was built of dark sandstone and was 90 feet tall. Not only was the tower so short it couldn't be seen, the lens wasn't visible and mariners often complained that they feared they would wreck trying to find it. The tower was heightened 60 feet in 1854 and a stronger lens put into the lighthouse. During the war between the states, the lighthouse lens was removed, as were all the Confederate lighthouse lenses. Shortly after the war, a new, bigger tower was built. The first lighthouse was demolished, and its rubble could be seen near the new tower for many years. Cape Hatteras National Seashore owns the present Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. It was built in 1870, the second lighthouse built with the double wall design. It is located in the village of Buxton and is the tallest brick lighthouse in North America. It was built to guide mariners through Diamond Shoals, also known as the Graveyard of the Atlantic. The first Cape Lookout Lighthouse, built in 1812, was an octagonal framed structure built with wooden shingles and a brick stairwell. It was 93 feet tall, and mariners complained that it wasn't tall enough. When the new Cape Lookout Lighthouse was built in 1859, the old lighthouse was used as keeper's quarters and possibly was destroyed during the war between the states. Cape Lookout National Seashore owns Cape Lookout Lighthouse, built in 1859 to help navigate mariners through Lookout Shoals. With its signature checkered black and white design, this was the second lighthouse built there and the first lighthouse to be built with the double wall design. It was the first tall tower to be built on the coast at 150 feet tall. The center of the black diamonds points in a north-south direction, while the center of the white diamonds points east-west. In 2017, the underwater power line, which feeds the electricity to the light, was in need of replacement. It would cost between 2 and $3 million. Instead, the U.S. Coast Guard chose to replace the 1,000-watt bulb with solar-powered LED lights, which will cost less than $6,000 and reduce maintenance by $93,000 a year, which is a huge savings. It is one of the few towers whose flash continues throughout the daytime hours. Cape Lookout Lighthouse is located on a barrier island and a boat must be taken. Ferry services operated by the National Seashore leave from either Harker's Island or Beaufort. Oak Island Lighthouse is our youngest lighthouse. It was built in 1958 to take the place of the Cape Fear Tower, which was a steel structure built in 1903 on Baldhead Island. It is owned by the town of Caswell Beach. Paint mixed in with a cement means it never needs painting. The way to the top is through a series of ladders, which is unusual for a lighthouse. At one time, it was the brightest lighthouse in the United States and the second brightest light in the world, beat out by a French lighthouse on the English Channel. The candle power has been reduced in many of the lighthouses now, so they are not as bright as they once were. Oak Island Lighthouse flashes during the day as well as the night. It is said that Charlie Swan 
former keeper of the Cape Fear Light, was asked to detonate the explosive to blow up the Cape Fear Tower, and he refused. But he agreed to turn on the switch to the Oak Island Lighthouse. Harbor lights guide ships into a body of water near a coast in which ships can anchor safely. Old Baldy Lighthouse is our oldest standing tower, built in 1817, and is the only federal-style or octagonal-shaped lighthouse remaining in North Carolina. Located on Baldhead Island, formerly known as Smith Island, a boat must be taken to visit the lighthouse. Ferry services from Southport is the shortest distance. No automobiles are allowed on the island, only golf carts and bicycles. The tower is owned and operated by Old Baldy Foundation. The foundation now owns the first order for Nell Lens from the second lighthouse built on the island. The second Cape Fear Light, which was built on the island in 1903 and discontinued in 1958 when the Oak Island Lighthouse was built. The foundation plans to build a museum to house the lens and tell a story of the Cape Fear Lighthouses. Old Baldy is the second lighthouse here. The first tower, built in 1794, was the first lighthouse built in North Carolina. In 1813, the government ordered the tower dismantled due to erosion caused by New Inlet, formed eight miles away during a hurricane of 1761, years before the 1794 tower was built. In 1813, the government appropriated funds for a new lighthouse which is known as Old Baldy. Old Baldy does not have a functioning light in the tower now. The 108 steps are made of wood and are quite easy to climb. Ocracoke Lighthouse is located within Cape Hatteras National Seashore. It is located in Ocracoke Village on the southern end of Ocracoke Island. It is the oldest working tower in North Carolina, built in 1823. Doors to the tower open during the summer if there are enough volunteers. The bumpy texture on the lighthouse was due to the concoction of the first painting job. Water, ground whiting, which is a fish, whitewash, glue, and rice. It is the only tower not open to the public for climbing. Is it the teeny hatch at the top where people have been known to get stuck that prevents the National Park from letting people climb? No, the United States Coast Guard still owns the lens, and it's an active aid to navigation. But people have gotten stuck trying to get through the hatch. River lights helped with the maritime traffic that was beyond the barrier islands on their way to and from mainland ports, such as Elizabeth City, Wilmington, Plymouth, and Edenton. They are also known as screw pile lighthouses, standing on stilts approximately 35 feet above the water. There are two river lighthouse replicas in North Carolina. Roanoke Marshes on the Manteo waterfront is accessible by a short pier. The original lighthouse was located at the southern entrance of the Croatan River. The replica is owned by the town and open daily free to the public. Roanoke River Lighthouse replica is located in Plymouth on the grassy area of the waterfront. The Washington County Waterways Commission in Plymouth built this replica of the 1866 tower, which was the first of the three that stood at the mouth of the river. The first tower was destroyed by fire in 1885. A second was built that same year, but was destroyed by ice. The lighthouse and the museum across the street are open to the public. The third Roanoke River Lighthouse was built in 1887 and was decommissioned in 1941. It was moved by a private owner, Emmett Wiggins, in the 1950s to Edenton, where he hauled sand and dirt around it to connect it to the land. This third tower has been bought by the town of Edenton and relocated to the waterfront at Colonial Park. 
it has been completely restored and the interior is appointed with period furnishings, a project made possible by the Department of Transportation and the town. It is open to the public and accessible by a short pier. Range lights mark a safe channel into smaller bodies of water, including inlets, rivers, and harbors. Designers made two lights work together. One shorter tower built close to the water teamed up with a second taller tower, which also housed the keeper, was built behind it. As vessels entered the channel, navigators lined up the taller light directly above the shorter light. When the lights were aligned, captains were able to navigate safely. The sand in these waters moved constantly like in the shoals in the ocean. When the lights aligned correctly, the boat could travel over the deepest part of the water. However, since the sands moved constantly, the Corps of Engineers had to dredge to keep it navigable. This cost money and took time. So, they started building the shorter tower on wheels so it could be moved easily. Price's Creek Range Light was built in 1849 and is the only remains of a range light in North Carolina. It rests on the Archer Daniels Midland property in Southport. The lighthouse is visible from the Southport Fort Fisher Ferry. It's only accessible by boat. Outer Banks Lighthouse Society has been granted permission by Archer Daniels Midland to visit. Price's Creek Range Light is only about 20 feet tall. Its lantern room is missing and was damaged in the Civil War. It was used to aid the blockade runners. The Pharaoh Lighthouse in Alexandria, Egypt was lit by a bonfire with reflectors to magnify the light. During storms it was kept lit and the smoke would steer mariners away. In the 1700s to early 1800s, towers in the United States were lit with whale oil lanterns, then kerosene and other oils with parabolic reflectors to magnify the light. This was designed by Amy Argand and was inferior to Frenchman Augustin Fresnel's design of 1822 using prisms to magnify the light. Stephen Pleasanton the fifth auditor to the U.S. Treasury, who was appointed to oversee operations of the United States Lighthouse Establishment, tried to save the government money by using Argonne's more conservative method of lighting. Ships continued to wreck at sea because they couldn't see the lights. The U.S. Lighthouse Board was created in 1852 due to complaints from mariners. The board adopted the Fresnel lens as the new standard for lighting. A first order for Nell Lens is huge. Pictured here is a member of the Outer Banks Lighthouse Society standing inside the Body Island Lighthouse Lens, not being able to touch either side or top. It is the lens which is the most important part of a lighthouse. In present day working towers, the oil lighting mechanism has been replaced with 1000 watt bulb often which will replace themselves when the old one burns out, another starts working immediately so that the tower's never darkened. Most coastal towers have first order lenses. Harbor lights in smaller towers are fitted with smaller lenses. During the Civil War, lenses were removed from lighthouses, hidden in various places, and most of them ended up in other towers after the war was over. Each lighthouse has flash patterns which identifies the towers at night. For instance, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse flashes once every seven and a half seconds for a total of eight flashes per minute and repeats the sequence until daybreak. In 1835, erosion caused Cape Hatteras Lighthouse to be abandoned. The lens was vandalized in 1946, and in 1949, the first order for Nell lens from Cape Hatteras Lighthouse was removed. It has been reassembled at the graveyard of the Atlantic Museum in Hatteras Village. It is an enormous sight to see, although it is still missing 600 of its 1,000 prisms. Day marks are the designs on towers so that mariners can identify the lighthouses during the day. 
Many people think that the diamonds or checkers on Cape Lookout was intended for Cape Hatteras Lighthouse because of the diamond shoals. But no. Peter Conover Haynes of the Corps of Engineers planned for the lighthouses to follow a pattern that continued down the coast of North Carolina. Unpainted brick, black and white bands, black and white spirals, and black and white checkers. The Outer Banks Lighthouse Society was formed in 1994 to work towards getting funds to restore Body Island Lighthouse. After a halt due to additional problems in the restoration, which began in 2009, it was completed in 2012. The tower was open for climbing for the first time in history in April of 2013. Here you see a plaque inside the lighthouse with the first spelling, Bodies Island Lighthouse. Restoration of Body Island Lighthouse began in 2009. This lighthouse had never had any work since it was built in 1872. Chunks of iron were falling off the tower and visitors couldn't get near the lighthouse. The restoration was halted because the park ran out of funds. Fortunately, more funding was granted to complete the restoration. The lighthouse was open to the public for climbing for the first time ever in 2013. Relocation of the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse in 1999 was one of the most exciting events of the century. Outer Banks Lighthouse Society was instrumental in this legislation. Many Dare County residents had rather see the lighthouse fall into the ocean than move it, fearing it would be destroyed. The National Academy of Sciences had proven that the tall tower could be moved safely. It was relocated a half a mile inland. It was so safe to move that the superintendent of Cape Hatteras National Seashore was in the tower when it began to move. The National Park Service now asks that if it was far enough as the ocean is already encroaching the shore. The lighthouse was cut from its foundation and lifted hydraulically. It was pushed along a track for a certain distance and the track would be moved to the front of the tower so it could continue its path. This process took longer than actually moving the lighthouse. It was impossible to see it move, it was so slow. Workers put orange traffic cones five feet in front of the lighthouse, which toppled when the giant moved that short distance. What lubricated the tracks? Ivory soap. There was a shortage of it on Hatteras Island during the move. Although the residents of Dare County oppose the relocation, they are happy that their lighthouse has been saved. 20,000 people visited the park during the relocation to watch the monumental move. Outer Banks Lighthouse Society had the remaining foundation stones. The lightest weight was 4,000 pounds. We had them engraved with the names and dates of the lighthouse keepers of both towers and arranged in a circle at the original site. The powerful ocean's overwash constantly covered them with sand and moved them. So now they've been moved closer to the lighthouse and arranged in an amphitheater setting entitled Keepers of the Light Amphitheater. Presently, the Outer Banks Lighthouse Society is working with Cape Hatteras National Seashore to see that a sign is placed at the former location of Cape Hatteras Lighthouse so that visitors will see the need to move it due to the sea's encroachment. We have created grants to see that children in North Carolina are able to visit lighthouses. Here you see some of our members preparing the Body Island Lighthouse lens for storage while the tower is being restored. Members of our society are sometimes able to go to areas normally closed to visitation, such as climbing Ocracoke Lighthouse or visiting Price's Creek Range Light and putting bricks in the foundation of the newly relocated Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. The Life Saving Service was a sister service to the United States Lighthouse Service. Often the two worked together. 
Chickamacomico Life Saving Station in Rodanthe is one of the most completely restored life saving stations in the United States. It is operated by a nonprofit, the Chickamacomico Life Saving Station and Historic Site, and it's open from mid April through November, Monday through Friday. The modern-day lighthouse keeper is a position desired by many, thinking it must be a lush job. In olden days, this was a very demanding job physically, and often the keepers and their families were isolated from the rest of the world for months at a time. Kurtuk Beach Lighthouse has a modern-day keeper family, complete with children, goats, chickens, guinea pigs, and a dog. There are opportunities at Cape Lookout National Seashore to volunteer and stay at the lighthouse, but the wait time is long, so get on the list now. We can all be keepers by joining Outer Banks Lighthouse Society and working to preserve North Carolina's lighthouses. Working with Outer Banks Lighthouse Society is rewarding. Education is the key to preservation. Visit our website to keep up with ongoing developments.